I want to welcome once again to uh, First Christian Church, a Sunday school lesson for our uh, elementary and middle school children. And today uh, we're going to uh, get into our Bible, our Holy Bible, the NRSV Children's Bible. And we're going to start uh, reading some of the stories therein. And if you haven't had the chance to look at the very first video that we, uh, I did, that is still available on YouTube, and you may want to go back and watch that one first before you watch this one. Um, it gives you a little bit of introduction about how to use this Bible and the different parts. So today we're going to look at the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, uh, Genesis, which is in the Old Testament. We learned last week that the Bible is broken up into two main sections. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the Old Testament books being all these stories and events that took uh, place before the birth of Jesus. And the New Testament uh, takes us uh, from the life of Jesus uh, just before his birth, through his birth, all the way uh, through his resurrection, and then a few years after his resurrection. And so we're going to start all the way at the beginning in Genesis. Uh, we're going to look at chapters 1 and chapters 2. And this may be a good time, if you want, to pause the video. And if you, uh, I would encourage you to take some time and actually read those uh, two chapters. What you're going to see in those two uh, chapters are the creation story of how um, the earth and the skies and the all the planets and how we as humans were made in these particular stories. And we have two different, not different stories, but two creation stories that um, are in these two chapters. Chapter one of Genesis uh, goes into detail about the seven days uh, on earth, about how God was uh, hovering over the formless void and how he made earth and how he made the moon and the sun and all the different planets, and then how he made dry land appear on the earth. Apparently, earth was just a watery void uh, area where he suddenly made uh, land to appear. And then we go through all the different days in which animals are, uh, are created and... Uh, and he made the moon, which is called the lesser light, and then the greater light, which we assume is the sun, and then living creatures like birds and swarms and insects, and then wild animals on the earth of every kind, and then he made fish. Then he talks about how he made uh, mankind. And uh, interestingly enough, in chapter 1, verse 27, again, the chapter 1, is the big number. Verse 27 is the little number. He said, God, so God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You know, if you were in JYF this past Wednesday, we talked a lot about God and who each of us kind of visualized we, who he was when we thought about God. And I mentioned that uh, we are told that we are made in God's image. Well, this is where we get this from. It's from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. And God made humankind in his own image. And it makes me wonder even more so what he or she or it looks like, you know, with God as a being. And um, it's really a tantalizing question, one we don't probably will never know the answer to while we're here on earth. But it's still fun to think about, you know, the God that was able to create the sun, which, golly, is so hot. How could someone make that? And the moon, that's so big and heavy, and earth, and all the planets, it just, just boggles the mind. Oh, we have a little friend here with us today. This um, friend is Clementine. Clementine, you want to come over and say hi? He'll probably come over and... Uh, I call him Stinky because he likes to stink up the place sometimes after he eats. Yeah, yeah he's kind of, that's his nickname, but uh, Shauna and Emma have named, the official name is Clementine, and Clementine, you want to 
learn about Genesis, the creation story. Oh gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah, Clementine, God made even you. Um, yeah, uh, he's, she's very interested in that. So anyway, the neat thing about Genesis is, is we get a second creation story. It's like a second version of the same story. And that's what chapter two is. And we learn a little bit more specifics about how he made man and then how he made woman, taking a rib out of the man to make the woman because um, he didn't want to, a person to be by themselves. And he understands that we need um, friends and companions. Um, boy, we've learned that more than anything during this COVID time, haven't we? That, you know, not being around other people, it kind of makes us sad sometimes. So, um, and that's why I'm glad we have uh, friends like Clementine <laughs> who are walking across my legs as we speak. So we read chapter sec two there, the second chapter, and then it talks about the Garden of Eden, which I'm just fascinated by the Garden of Eden, which we believe to be in Mesopotamia. If you want to get a map out and see where Mesopotamia is, it's kind of where Iraq and Iran are right now. If you looked on a modern day map, probably really close to the Persian Gulf. We're not 100% sure, but it talks about four rivers, two of which where we know, the Tigris and Euphrates, and then two others which we don't know where they are, the Pishon and the Gihon rivers. And there's some, oh, good guesses people have made over the years, but we really don't know. So we don't know where the Garden of Eden is. And we're going to save a little bit about that story to next time because um, the Garden of Eden factors very much into chapter three, um, which we will do next week. Um, so I really hope you'll take some time and read the two creation stories that we have in chapter one and chapter two. It's a great way to start the Bible. And it, uh, I know there's a lot of questions um, that come from this, but it at least gives us a good foundation to work from as to why we're here and why God created us. Something tells me that God was maybe, I uh, wanted some companionship too, and he created man. Uh, so that maybe he wouldn't be lonely or she wouldn't be lonely or God as a being would not be lonely. And, uh, and I kind of wonder if that's why he gave us free will because it's so much fun to be with someone that chooses to be with you instead of someone that has to be with you. And I think God gives us free will to see if we choose to be with him. And I hope through this learning, this process, that you'll choose to want to be with him. So at this time, we want to turn to our book, finding your way through the Bible that you should have. And um, last week I had encouraged you to start with page one, working through page 25. And if you've done that, at this point, we'll work from 26 through page uh, 30, uh, 34. And I'll make that, yeah, 35 actually. Work through page 35. And there's some activities in there. You'll need some scissors to cut out uh, a couple of bookmarks. And there's gonna be some questions that's gonna teach you a little bit more about how to use this Bible. And be interested to see how much you remember from the first couple of pages of the workbook to see how much you remember. But it does talk about having uh, some symbols, you know, learning about God's path and discover who God is and how God wants you to live. And then it talks about finding the path, you know, that the Bible, you know, to encourage you to learn how to apply the truth, uh, the truths in the Bible to your life, applying them. And then the light on the path, you know, there'll be signs where they're going to encourage you to memorize some Bible verses uh, that you can use uh, to apply in your life. And then there's a symbol here, points along the path which is going to encourage you to explore the people and the places uh, of the Bible. So if you'll work through up to page 34, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, it's a really good workbook. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this Sunday school class, and we look forward to uh, uh, seeing you next week.